A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 16. Spray paint in the inside of the frames, and while this paint was drying, it was a good time to paint the blast pipe in the outer part of the workshop. Once the paint on the frames was dry, I refitted the expansion brackets in place using two BA stainless steel bolts, and after fitting the brackets, I thought it would be a good idea to remove the sharp edges of the cab floor panels. I should have done this a while ago because the edges were very sharp and I have quite a lot of scratch marks in various places on my hands. Sometimes I'd walk past the engine on the bench and scrape myself on the corners. Very shortly that will be a thing of the past. If you've been following this series you will know what these parts are. Two special expansion link brackets for the boiler and freshly out of the acid bath is the blast pipe. A while ago I sprayed some etching primer on the inside of the frames where the brackets fit. Now that the etching primer is thoroughly dry, I can paint the area using HMG Paints Black Satin. Here's a bit of a tip, I use it frequently. I'm spraying inside the frames, but I don't want the paint to go everywhere, so to mask off the parts I don't want painting, I'm using a t-shirt. While I appreciate that my old t-shirt is not as good as using masking tape, it's a lot quicker. First of all, I paint the right hand side, and then the left hand side, repositioning my t-shirt. In this case, the t-shirt isn't in the right position, so some of the paint was accidentally applied to one of the cab floor panels. I'm giving the inside of the frames quite a good coating of this satin black paint. Once the boiler's refitted, underneath it is going to be a very inhospitable place, so I'm applying quite a lot of this paint. After finishing the painting, I removed the t-shirt and you can clearly see the excess paint on the edge of the cab floor panel. While the paint is still wet, it's very easy to remove it just using a cloth. If the paint was dry, I would have had to use cellulose thinner or lacquer thinner. For the next part of the job, it's time to go into the outer part of the workshop. And I wonder how many viewers know what this is. It is a part from an old Manfrotto video tripod. And in the clip coming up, you can see what I'm using it for. It's to support the blast pipe in a vertical position. After shaking the can of etching primer for a few minutes, it's time to start. By fitting a long bolt on top of this small tripod part, it allows me to rotate the blast pipe so I can paint it all the way around. And as per usual, I give it one coat all the way around, closely followed by a second coat all the way around again. I am of course being careful not to apply too much paint because I don't want it to run or drip. Here is a clip showing the paint drying on the blast pipe. I'll leave this to dry overnight, then I'll apply the top coat tomorrow. Despite the postal strike, eventually these parts arrived. I bought them just after Christmas via eBay because Blackgate's engineering were closed over the holiday. I bought these bolts in packs of 10 and in three lengths, half an inch, three quarters of an inch and one inch. Why stainless steel? Because they won't rust. I always like to make things as fully serviceable as possible and I give a bit of thought to the next person who may work on the engine. The original bolts were very over tightened, not particularly rusty and they were really difficult to remove. And in the future, after I've been pushing up the daisies for some time, a repairman in the future may think of me in a favourable light. I'm not going to over tighten these nuts and bolts and of course they won't rust. Actually, the two BA nuts are not stainless steel, the normal mild steel. Once the job is almost finished, and the boiler is fully mounted on the expansion joints, I will paint the nuts on the outside of the frames. The right-hand side mounting is held to the frames using three 2BA bolts. The one on the left, though, has four. Two of these bolts need to be longer than the others, because they go through the frames and through the hand pump casting, then they have a nut on the end. Here, just as a test, I'm using a 1 inch long hexagon 2BA bolt just to make sure it fits, and it's a bit tight in the hole. Using two 3 quarters of an inch long bolts and two 1 inch long bolts, that should be fine to hold the bracket to the frames. Originally, I was a bit concerned about 2BA bolts to hold this weight, but they will be plenty strong enough because there are seven of them and the load will be spread well. When I fitted the first bracket, as I held the bracket in my hand, I made sure that three fingers were covering the three bolts, so the bolts could all be pushed into the holes simultaneously. 
With the left hand side of the bracket, two of the holes are actually tight, so I couldn't do this. The first two bolts were pushed through the holes in the frames, and two BA nuts were fitted on the outside. But the end one, which is one inch long and goes through the water pump bracket as well, needed a bit of persuasion. Once I tapped it into place, I fitted a nut on the end using a pair of forceps, just to initially hold the nut in the right position. Then to tighten the nut, I used a box key, very much like this one. I used a small stubby screwdriver on the inside to rotate the bolt. And at the other end, I rotated the box key using my Barco spanner. One of the bolts is really difficult to fit. It's the one behind the water pump ram. In fact, I think I'm going to leave this out. It's not necessary. The brackets are both held by three 2BA bolts, and the water pump is also held to the frames with three 2BA bolts. I'm fairly sure that the assembly will be strong enough with three instead of four. Now I'm going to tackle this particularly vicious piece of steel plate that keeps scratching my hands and fingers. All of the edges of these two pieces of steel plate that form the cab floor are sharp and rough. I'm using my small Proxon angle grinder fitted with a flapper wheel to dress these pieces of steel plate and make them so they are no longer sharp. After going around all of the external corners and all of the edges, the steel plate feels far better. In this clip I'm deburring every one of the holes because there were burrs just about on every one of them. At this stage I hadn't fully tightened the nut using the box key so I thought I would show the method that I used for fully tightening it. And once again, I do repeat myself a lot in these videos on certain aspects of doing the job, do not over tighten small model engine bolts. Even if you don't shear them off, you will damage the threads, which in turn makes them very difficult to remove if you need to dismantle the parts. Add some rust to this equation and you will find yourself needing a chisel to chisel off the bolts because they will not undo. That's it for this episode. The boiler is scheduled to arrive back in my workshop on the 10th of January 2022. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.